he listen? What stuck? Obviously, Kelly listened, or maybe she thinks it's a, 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 a great topic and hasn't listened yet. But let me know who, if you listened, what stuck? Head into chat and let us know. Uh, and welcome to all the all the all the new people. Thank you for joining us. Um, let me know in chat what stuck if you managed to listen, and I'll let you know what we're gonna how saboteurs show up. Um, thanks, Anya. I think for me, do you know what the most revealing thing was how we how we self convince ourselves about our saboteur like so if you listened you'll know that mine came out as a hyper achiever um and it's almost like you go well it's fine to be a hyper achiever because that means we get loads of stuff done and then you're like then you read all the ways that you're like oh yeah but you had no feelings <laughs> you're like oh that's a bit of a problem so uh the positive intelligence site was really interesting yeah it is really good loads but everything I'm going to talk about today I'm going to drill a bit more into the saboteur profiles and something that we didn't really talk about on the podcast which is how you counteract them with something called the sage so I'm going to talk it's all linked to what we talked about and it's all from the same point of research but it's it's a slight it's a build on from what we talked about on the um on the podcast and it's all taken from the positive intelligence site um and uh Shahzid Shaleen's work who's the person who's done the most work on it I'll give you all the references uh how yeah Jess how the more you get into them the more you realize you need to work on them yeah <laughs> it's a bit depressing isn't it uh, it's all right though because we're all here together and we've all got them so uh yeah yeah and you're with you that we convince ourselves it's our strengths on steroids interesting Brilliant. Uh, everyone who's new, if you haven't got chat open, get it open because it's the best. It's the best way of like keeping up with everybody. Um, okay, so let's dive into this a little bit differently. Um, what I thought we'd do is I would recap the saboteurs. Um, and to be honest, I wanted to get it right, so I've got notes. If you see me looking at my phone, I've got my notes which are on the pod sheet about the definitions of all of the saboteur profiles. So I'm going to use that to do it. Then I thought we'd do a bit of annotation so that we can see as a community if we've got any commonality in our saboteurs. Um, and then we will do a quick breakout. And then we're going to talk about how we stop them. So 26 minutes to do quite a lot of stuff. What's new? What's new? Um, okay, this is a, a quote that we didn't talk about in the podcast, actually, but in, in reading around it, um, and I really wanted to acknowledge Shahzad Shamin, who's done the most work here as well. Um, but one of the quotes that he said that I was like, it's interesting, your mind is your best friend, but also it's your, it's actually the quote is very worst enemy. Uh, I think uh, the reason I like this is that our saboteurs are self-created. They are the thoughts that are in our head that we often don't acknowledge largely because we self justify them like oh it's okay that I try and control everything because it means we get it done or it's okay that I'm a hyper achiever because it means I, I get I get I get lots lots achieved all these ways that we kind of self self create and self justify our saboteurs and Perhaps sometimes it does help us, but it also holds us back in all in all kinds of ways. Um, so I thought what we'd do is we talk through the 10 self-saboteurs. Um, now I say 10 like that because judge is apparently the one that we've all got. Um, so judge is, a, is our critique. It's our kind of uh, the master of our mistakes. It's the it's the the one that makes us very self-critical in situations. And apparently we all have a judge in us when we um we kind of it's just the critique that's gone a bit crazy <laughs> inside our brain. Um, and what happens is the judge then makes friends with another saboteur in your brain. And so you tend to have a leading saboteur. If you do do the assessment on positiveintelligence.com, it it ranks all of these. But I thought what I'd do today is we'd sort of, well, maybe we'll self-assess. So I'm going to read out the profiles of the other nine saboteurs and then you're going to self-assess which one you think you are. Um, and then maybe after today, if you haven't already done it, you can take the survey and see whether your self-assessment aligns up with what the survey generates for you. Um, and Lucy has kindly put in the chat for us the link to the positiveintelligence.com website where you can do the free self-saboteur profile. Caveat, caveat, they send you a lot of emails afterwards. So once you've learned enough, unsubscribe um okay so let's talk about these profiles and then i'm going to um make sure that our annotation is anonymous and we can see uh what what similarities we might have everyone so the first one is the victim this is where i make sure i check my notes so i say it right so the victim this is an extreme focus on internal feelings and it's where someone might use emotion to gain attention or affection so as i as i talk these through i think the question for you to have in your mind is which one feels most familiar so does does the victim one feel familiar an extreme focus on internal feelings and using emotion to gain attention or affection the pleaser, the pleaser, um, seeks acceptance by helping or flattering others, often at the expense of their own needs. 
it's very dramatic, isn't it? Sorry, everyone, this is like a heavy bit. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll, it'll get better, it'll get better. Um, restless, constantly in search of greater excitement and non-stop busyness. Uh, <laughs> Um, next one, hypervigilant, continuous anxiety about the risk of things going wrong. Hyperachiever, dependent, oh, big word, dependent on constant performance and achievement for self-respect and validation. Hyperrational, an intense focus on rational processing of everything, including relationships. The controller, anxiety-based need to take charge and control situations. The stickler, uh, driven by perfectionism, process and order. And the avoider, uh, avoids difficult and unpleasant tasks and conversations. So they are our collective of saboteurs. What I would now love to know is which one of these feels most familiar. And the way that we're going to do it is with annotations. Um, everybody that's new, um, annotations is the way we kind of put stars on our screen so that we can get an anonymous view of what's, what's going on with everybody. And um, the way that you do the annotations is if you go towards the top of your screen, you should see view options. And then you go to annotate and then stamp and star. So it's few options, annotate, stamp and star. Lucy's put it in the chat for you. If anyone's on the phone, it might be either hard or impossible to do. Um, or sometimes if you join by a web browser, it's not possible. But if that is you, if it's not possible and you're like, I want to contribute, then you can um, message me privately and I will add you uh, add your star manually. Um, but um, otherwise, yeah, oh, don't, don't worry. It's just so we can get a little bit of a sense of the community. Oh, what have we got? What have we got? Uh, trying to, what do you reckon, everybody? Hyper, are we a group of hyper-achieving, pleasing controllers? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> this probably doesn't sound great, does it? Do you know what's coming out most? A bit restless, a bit hyper-achieving. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I just like, yeah, I'm a bit of a stickler too. And um, I think it's quite interesting, actually, that the role of labels. Sarah, Sarah is quite anti a label. So honestly, whenever, when you'll hear in the podcast, whenever we do a, a, like a matrix or uh, something like this, which categorizes people. So I'm always, I'm always about sort of clarity. So I quite like a label because I'm like, okay, that helps us to understand more about this. Whereas Sarah is all about individuality I suppose more so she sort of never wants anyone to be constrained I think that's it she wants she doesn't anyone want to be constrained by a label so I'm always like okay now we've got to clarity we know our starting point and Sarah's always like yes but you can be multiple ones and you don't have to be this forever so don't feel boxed into it but the research does say that labeling things can be helpful for us um but what we don't want to do is like um leave you with a label for life like you are more than a stickler. You are more than a victim. You are more than that. It's just a way of us kind of getting a bit of clarity to start things off. So I think as a community, we're probably mostly a bit of a controller, a bit hyperachiever, a bit restless, a bit pleaser. They seem to be the most common ones. Now, in terms of understanding these, I wanted us to have a bit of a chat today, but I would suggest um, the positiveintelligence.com website because there's loads more information on there. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more generically about saboteurs. Um, what I want to do is just move your, remove your lovely stars, everybody. Now we've got that insight. There we go, all gone. Um, and I wanted us to think about two things is what we're gonna do. We've got 20 minutes left. So two things that we're gonna do. First thing is we're gonna explore how we can spot our saboteur. So how it's showing up, how it's holding us back, what we might be saying to ourselves about it. And the second thing we're gonna talk about is how we can stop our saboteur. And when I say stop, like I said, I'm gonna talk about the collectively what you can do with your saboteurs, but in the each individual saboteur has slightly different things you might want to do, like whether you're a victim or a hyperachiever, for example. But for all of us, I'm gonna talk sort of more generically about how we, how we can stop them. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go into a breakout. I know a couple of people are messaging me that can't do breakouts. Don't worry. What I'll do is I'll put everybody into a group of 
three and then if you can't join you you know hopefully there'll still be two in the, in the room and we'll, we'll do the breakout I think we'll back about eight minutes or so and then we'll come back together and um, what we're going to talk about in the breakout is first of all spot the saboteur so you're going to talk about which one you identify with most so I would say the hyper achiever and um, then you're going to say how does it justify itself to you like honestly like you, you you probably go but it's okay that I'm this or but it's okay that I'm a controller it's okay so what does it say to you um the good things and the bad things when I say the good things like I mean how does it justify justify itself um, and maybe what are some of the negative messages just talk more broadly around what this says to you second how does it show up so my I think my hyper achiever shows up in a relentlessness very relentless and a an independence like I will I will get it done and I will work very hard to get it done for a very long time uh, so that's probably like what I would say uh, and then how do you think that holds you back? So I think it holds me back because I don't acknowledge sometimes when other people could do something better than me. It stops me asking for help sometimes. Uh, leaves, leaves me to be quite tired. I often get quite tired before I recognize that I need help, whereas I'd probably help myself sooner if that hyperachiever saboteur wasn't kind of driving me so powerfully. That's the sort of conversation I want you to have, just because I want you to, I want you to be able to support each other by talking to each other and just raise that level of self-awareness um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the both the breakout rooms now anyway everyone that's messaging me don't worry if you can't join don't worry or if you don't want to join it's fine i just think that the more that we can normalize and explore this stuff the better and you're in such a supportive community to be able to do it so if you are up for it let's spend a little bit of time talking about it and then when we come back um what we're going to do is talk about how do we stop the saboteur and I've got a few new insights that weren't in the podcast to share with you on that topic so breakout rooms are going to open now um oh Lucy um you've already done them <laughs> thanks everybody um hopefully if you could just join the breakout rooms we're we'll back with you very soon chats everybody um let us know give us a bit of a sense in the chat how your conversations were uh, was it useful to talk to people um was it supportive give us a bit of um was a bit great oh brilliant everybody Oh, I'm glad. I think this is the same sort of things when you talk about your confidence gremlins. It feels very, um, it feels very supportive to be able to, to do it, to talk about these things and to sort of normalize it. Like this stuff is a bit uncomfortable, but actually the more we, we talk about it with people, I think the easier it becomes to do to talk. So I'm glad. Brilliant. I think one of the big benefits of being in this community is they get the opportunity to connect with each other. So thank you. Thank you for being part of that. Um, okay, let's now talk about the second bit, which is how we stop how we stop the saboteurs. Um, and I'm just gonna talk through a few a few different points that I've picked up from reading um, Shahzid Shamin's book on positive intelligence. So he just talk about this um, positive intelligence score and you can do the assessment to, to work out what your positive intelligence score is on the same website as you can do the survey. Um, and it's all about this balance between what he calls your sage, which I actually find a funny word, I, I feel like, I feel like instead of sage, I would probably say supporter, like your supporter versus your saboteur. Sage isn't a word that feels that familiar to me. So if it feels like a weird word to you too, think about it as your, if you've, if you've got a self-saboteur, you also have a self-supporter within you. And your positive intelligence score, your PQ score, is the balance between your self-supporter, your sage, and your saboteur. So if your self-supporter, your sage, is, is strong, then that can counteract the control that your saboteur has over your thinking and your feeling and your behavior and there are five characteristics of a sage or your self-supporter and um, there's the extent to which you kind of have empathy so you're compassion with yourself so you're not you're not too hard on yourself there's the extent to which you have more of an explorative approach so you are curious and open rather than critical and closed there's the um your ability to innovate so to generate new thinking and new ideas rather than do the same things you've always done and potentially get a bit stuck. There is your um, ability to navigate. So think sort of scenarios, your ability to, if you've got like a, a naughty moment in a squiggly career, if your self-supporter is quite high, you'd be able to see different ways through that. Um, whereas if your saboteur is very strong, you, you potentially get quite stuck in a situation. And then the fifth characteristic that strengthens your sage, your self-supporter, is all about this kind of activating ability, like the energy to act. And so generally, your self-supporter will be stronger than your saboteur if you can dial up 
these five characteristics. But specifically, there are some things that you can do to activate your SAGE, to increase that kind of self-support, to, to drive the positive um, intelligence score. The first one is a bit strange, I think, but apparently part of um, what gives a saboteur a control is where it takes over our thinking. So if you're the victim, for example, you know, you get into victim mode or if I'm the hyperachiever, that my mantra becomes get it done, get it done, get it done. And so when the self-saboteur has taken control of our thinking, one of the things that we can do to increase our self-supporter is to activate our senses. I find this really interesting. So to be like more more hyper aware of our senses. So our touch, right? our touch or our smell, or um, the, they talk about in the book, for example, when you're in a shower, just like really being conscious of like the warmth on your skin or like, you know, the, like the feeling of the water or when you're eating to be very conscious of the sensation and taste of eating. And um, they talk about it, this idea of zooming in and zoning in. And if you can do that, what you can do is basically calm the mind and you can take it's sort of like a mindful moment, I suppose, to tune into your senses because the saboteur is sort of a bit mindless. It has taken control and it is, it's driving your thinking. So the idea of um, sort of zooming, zoning in, zooming in can just calm the mind and give you back a bit of control. So I thought that was an interesting thing perhaps to experiment with. Um, and in the book, I've copied it for you here. It says you need to do, this is really, a um, hundred uh, PQ reps a day. It talks a lot about mental fitness and like a gym. It creates this analogy of a gym. And it says that over a day, the more that you can spot and stop your saboteur by bringing your senses in, the more that you can train your brain and, 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 and grow the self-supporter. So for example, can you see this? Maybe if I do this for you. Um, wait a second, everybody. See if I can zoom in a little bit for you. I'm going to spin it. Um, oh, gosh a bit ambitious Helen and there you go so in the book you have you kind of have this thing which is the idea of doing a bit of an assessment every day every time your saboteur comes up so you kind of talk about it so uh, here for example there's this idea of oh we can't see but brushing your teeth let me stop doing that so you can see it come back everybody Okay, that's not working very well. Um, I don't know why that big block has come up. But the idea of brushing your teeth and, and, and all those sort of different feelings that we have on a day-to-day -day basis and just being very conscious of them. So I think if your saboteur feels particularly strong, think about how you could activate your senses a little bit more. The other thing that it talks about is reframing situations. So when our saboteur is very strong, we often see the negative in a situation. And it talks about, think about three things that you're finding difficult at the moment. So I might say, oh, I'm finding my workload quite difficult. Difficult. I'm finding some particular friction quite difficult. I'm finding active rest quite difficult. And then think about how you can reframe it. So what is the opportunity in that challenge? So I might say, oh, I'm finding my opportunity, my workload quite difficult at the moment. But the positive reframe could be, well, this is an opportunity for me to really get clear on my priorities. And it says the more that you can reframe the hard things into an opportunity to learn, the, the more that you can bring your self-support up. So I thought that was that was perhaps an interesting thing. So you've got the tune into your senses and then reframe the three biggest challenges that you're facing at the moment. And then the last thing that it talked about was the importance of focusing, um, first of all, on your successes. So you'll know if you've been on any of our sessions or um you maybe read Squiggly Career, we talk about the importance of very small successes. So at the end of every day, thinking about three very small successes, but also thinking about three things that you are grateful for. And so this positive practice of reflecting on your successes and your kind of that gratitude reflection, even if you don't keep it up every day, is a positive thing to do. So senses, reflecting on successes and gratitude, and then also just thinking about um, that reframe or ways that you can grow yourself, your supporter to, to sort of quieten the saboteur. Right, everybody, I know that you need to go. I hope that that has been helpful for you today. I hope it's given you some things in addition to the podcast. The pod sheet has got a summary of other things on it. And then obviously Positive Intelligence has got loads of resources on there for you as well. And um, thank you very, very much for being here today. And um, the podcast that's going live on Tuesday is all about failure. Um, and there isn't going to be a pod plus next week. I can't, I don't know why, but my Sarah and the team was like, tell everyone there's no pod plus next week. So I presume we've got some kind of clash. So we're back the week after, but the topic is on failure. Um, but look forward to speaking to you all again very soon and have a great rest of your week everybody bye for now